Hey guys, welcome back to another installment of Natural Cut Records Presents The Green Room Tapes. This week, with a very special guest, we're featuring Obsidian Needle from Bellingham, Washington. Uh, Void from Obsidian Needle, I should say. Uh, Void, go ahead and uh, go ahead and take it away.
All right. <clears throat> so, <Ugh. laughs> how, do you, how do you feel after that one? You need a you need a little bit of water. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, perfect. So, uh, so Void, you and I actually have known each other for a while. Um, yeah, for quite a while, actually. Um, welcome back, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome back to our lovely, uh, dilapidated home. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure uh, most people watching, uh, most of most of our followers and whatnot, probably don't don't know you too personally and and what you do. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and and the kind of kind of the music you make too, if you could, because I think yeah. dark ambience is one of those things that is a lot less popular well i mean in my opinion a lot less popular than it should be but it, that that's a, fair yeah a lot of people don't know a whole lot about it um I, I at least for me dark ambient is really um exploring um my my emotions um what may seem negatively and definitely i feed negative emotions into it sure um i i get this uh very positive result with with uh my noise, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, ever since I, w- I was a, a, a young child, I've always been fascinated by just um, sounds, uh, birds chirping, wind rustling through the leaves and shit like that. Um, my favorite place, though, as a kid, um, was definitely, um, like, uh, clock shops. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all, like, you know, the the clocks going, you know, tick-tock, tick-tock, and, you know, you got, like, a hundred of them in there. It just creates all these weird, uh, messed-up rhythms, and I've always been a fan of that. And so taking taking that and taking my, um, my love of just weird sounds... Um, you know, back... back uh, th- this project's actually... Um, been around since like uh 2010 wow yeah um i think a little bit older than that i'm not 100 percent sure I say, actually i uh, i didn't even know that yeah um <clears throat> but um i i always wanted to express my my love of weird sounds and rhythms and just general weirdness i guess mm-hmm. um musically and i found dark ambient really speaks to me and really allows me to do that so that's that's pretty much where that comes from. Right. Yeah. And I think there's there's a lot of people truly, in my opinion, my experience, that whether it's uh, dark ambience, experimental, avant-garde, metal music, or any of the sort, um, people seem to have this stigma, I think, that a lot of people that make darker music are very inherently violent or e- evil people. <laughs> but it's it's funny, you know, um, you know me, I make uh, metal to yeah. death, death metal music myself, a lot of the screamy, growly stuff, uh, despite the fact that my work with um, Natural Cut Records couldn't be farther from that. No. <laughs> um, but uh, a lot of us are very, very nice, very nice, uh, comfortable, happy people. And uh, we actually... Uh, speaking for myself at least use those more violent or dark styles to actually express negative energies and get them out yeah definitely um, instead of pitting them up so um, I think that's something people are kind of stigmatizing less in my opinion but as time goes on which is great yeah um, but certainly that's that's something that I've always kind of struggled yeah. with, with well I, I kind of I kind of relate um, like like harder you know more aggressive styles of music to Certainly. like to like a landfill right. you know you, you get all the stuff that you don't want you just throw it out yeah absolutely. yeah and and for um at least for people like us you know um fans uh, just metal fans in general i i think at, uh, by and large kind of uh take that that harder music as kind of like a dumping it's, a, it's an outlet. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, definitely, it's an outlet, and um, yeah, for me, that's what obsidian needle is. Sure. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, did that first piece have a title, by the way? Uh, yes, that that piece was called "Call the Prayer." Um, it, I, I kind of I like to um, I like to have a variation of that starting every um, live show or mm-hmm. um, performance. Um, uh, that's, that's, um, 
because I, I kind of, that's where I, it's a, it's a point where I can stop and like collect my ideas, I sure, guess, um, sure. because all of this, all this from, from that point on is going to be improvised. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I, I just have thematic elements that I'm working off of, but the rest of that. You heard it here first. It's going to be completely improvised and original. <laughs> Pretty much. Um. Yeah, it's it's just I, I take that time. That's the only set piece. It's sure. It's it's the beginning invocation to the larger magical whole. I, I suppose. Um, well, the, as uh, as my uncle once said to me. <laughs> okay, let's continue forth. That's not true, by the way. <laughs> I have everything all set up. There we go.
Alrighty. <laughs> so void another thing, another another stigma. I w- kind of want to uh, take out behind the shed, and maybe maybe you would help me with this. <laughs> um, All right. That uh, that I know a lot of people have, and um, this one should I think be a little more understandable even to most people. Um, a lot of people seem to have this theory that electronic or synthetic artists are really less musicians <laughs> than, than everyone else. Talentless not, hacks. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, um, because they don't play <coughs> traditional, um, traditional instruments. Now, I have to say, uh, as an engineer uh, and a musician, as someone who plays... Um, practically in the double digits of instruments <laughs> and has been playing music for decades. Yeah. Uh, nothing pisses me off more than to hear that, that synthetic music is not musical or is doesn't take musical prowess. I would say, actually, in my honest opinion, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, what is what is your take on, on all of that? You, you are absolutely right. Um, you know, saying that electronic musicians are just, you know... Uh, Talentless hacks, fucking love that term. Um, you know, are are you know saying that is just it's it's just so far you know in the realm of just madness. Now, to me, first and foremost, well, to 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 interject, that's not to say that none of them aren't, because there are plenty of people that can take yeah. you know pre-programmed arpeggios and other things on on uh, Fruity Loops and just kind of splice already existing things together and go, boom, art. And, and of course, yes, that is very hacky. But, you know, the exact same thing could be said for a lot of garage rock bands, I think, too. Yeah, um, I mean, I, 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 I kind of view that, um, that aspect of it as, like, kind of akin to, like, painting a Rothko. Yeah, you can paint a whole canvas one color, but, like, you're just a one-trick pony at that point, you know? Exactly. Um, as far as this goes, I'm... With my rig, especially, I'm feeding one reverb pretty much maxed out into another reverb pretty much maxed out. So it's not only am I having to um, control the drones with everything and, and uh, uh, know where everything is patched in, because there's uh, these are semi uh, semi modular uh, synths that I'm working with, but I also have to fight feedback constantly. Well, certainly, so, nonetheless, <clears throat> understanding the different types types of uh, of uh, synths as well, yeah, uh, yeah. oscillators and and your different waveforms and everything as mm-hmm. well, goes well above and beyond the standard music theory of composition. Yeah, um, uh, and and of course, understanding that as well um, to be able to make make music and you know what time signature, what mode am I playing in, and things like that. Yeah. Um, takes a lot of depth and a lot of dedication. Uh, Definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, with synthesizers especially, especially like uh, like I said, you know, semi-modulars or even like modulars and uh, whatnot, you pretty much have to know a little bit of electrical theory to really understand these things. Absolutely. Um, there's just so many different standards for your uh, oscillators, like you have uh, hertz per octave and... Uh, I, I think it's like like 1.2 volts per octave, and it's just it's just a lot of different um, ground to carry, just different standards that you need to know, and uh, what will work and what won't work for them. So yeah, absolutely. So hopefully, if if even one person sees this and goes, oh well, you know, maybe I was wrong. Yeah, that would be pretty great. Oh, yeah, that um, that'd be awesome. But let, we're gonna go ahead and cut here and do a a, a live uh, run through of your rig. So if uh, if I could actually have you uh, describe to me. What we're uh, what we're looking at. <clears throat> okay, so first I have an uh, Arturia Microbrute. Um, this is mostly used for uh, my my just basic general sound creation. Um, I have a small sequencer that I can plug in notes and would just play it back. Um, uh, for for melodies and whatnot. Um, but the real magic for me, at least, is these two inputs in the back, the gate in and the gate out. Um, they just feed the signal into itself, so it um, so it just constantly drones. Um, next, I have a Yamaha MM30, just an old 
uh, four channel plus auxiliary mixer that got her to Goodwill for like five bucks like ten years ago or something. It just sounds like crap and I love it. Um, next I have a uh, Moog Verkstat and this is uh, again for uh, my, my basic sound creation and um, this thing just makes weird noises. I can't tune it so it's just for noises. Then I have a uh, Alesis Pico Verb. It's uh, my first stage of um, of reverb, and uh, I pre well not quite max, but pretty much max. Uh, next, I'm I'm actually using your um, your uh, Mr. Black Supermoon. Normally, I have shout out to Mr. Black from Portland, Oregon. Yeah, great great pedals. Get them. Um, <laughs> Please endorse my company, Mr. Black. <laughs> Just say it. Usually I have a uh, um, Electro Harmonics um, Holy Grail, which also is a great pedal. Yes, it it is, but um, I can't. Uh, same with with the uh, Pico Verb. I can't adjust how long the reverb is. Just mm. wet dry mix essentially. And next, um, my my last my last piece of uh, sound creation gear, other than a microphone, is. Um, uh, the uh, Digitech Main Squeeze, and I just use this to um, as a compressor, just to simply make sure shit doesn't get crazy. Right. Perfect. So with that, why don't we go ahead and uh, jump into the third piece, if if it pleases ye. Mm-hmm.
So it looks like we lost video for the very end. But no. I, I, just just the very very end. But I think I think that's okay. I think uh, I think we'll probably be forgiven for that one. Yeah. But um, to close out, uh, void from a city. A, I'm sorry. Obsidian Void from needle. Obsidian Needle. <laughs> Sometimes we make mistakes, too. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so, Void, I do uh, happen to know you're in some other groups as well. Yes. Uh, around the Bellingham area, for those who are interested. Um, and, of course, being a non, non-resident non Natural Cut Records artist, which first, very first, by the way, uh, we will... Very honored. Oh. Well, we were glad to have you. But we'll definitely be making sure to uh, put links in the description as well to Mm -hmm. to all of your works, uh, including Obsidian Needle, of course. But um, if you could tell us a little bit about your your other projects as well, that would be nifty. Yeah, um, I'm I'm in a um, I'm in a uh, black metal band. Um, uh, I I don't really feel at liberty right now to say. Okay, Uh, Um, and that's fine. Obviously, people follow your Obsidian Needle. I'm sure they'll. They'll, they'll find out eventually soon yes. enough we, we we are in the works of um, we, we are working on music very actively and hopefully something uh, comes out of that here in the very near future um, I just uh, actually just last night I um, I finished up recording all the music uh, for a split album that mm-hmm. I'm uh, going to be a full length split album not just a split tape um, with uh, a a buddy of mine, uh, uh, his project is called Actium, and uh, very, very awesome uh, stuff. If you're more into the electronic side of things, and um, yeah, there's there's another project kind of out in the air right now, but um, we'll see how how that one goes. Again, I'm not really at liberty to say what sure. that is or who's involved. So let's say I was busting around Bellingham, and I was just like, you know what, that Obsidian Needle, it really touched me, and it really it really uh, got my my juices moist. Uh, where where can I where can I see you perform? Um, or or more appropriately, how could I follow you to know where you would be? Yeah, um, I have a uh, Facebook page. Uh, if you just look up Obsidian Needle. And again, we'll we'll put the link in the description yeah. as well. Yeah, it should be there. I also have Bandcamp and SoundCloud, and um, yeah, that's where you can find me. And uh, beautiful. Again, uh, links will be up. So you can also find him at the YMCA, <laughs> watching watching men change. Yeah, yeah that's where he likes to spend most of his days. You caught me. Yes. You caught me. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so thank you to Void of Obsidian Needle. Uh, this is Danny V of NCR. Uh, next time, make sure to tune in. We'll be having uh, Hunter Vaughn live in the green room. Thanks for checking in, guys. Check out Obsidian Needle on Facebook, Bandcamp, and SoundCloud. And have a good night. Make sure to drive safely wherever you are, or if you're probably at home like you are, you know. Um, don't drink and drive. And don't beat your kids. Thanks. <laughs>